The Functional Nanomaterials Lab at KAUST focuses on the study of hybrid materials. These are materials that have an organic and inorganic component. We look at how these materials self-assemble, form functional materials that are useful for optoelectronics, and also applications related to renewable energy. Currently, we're working on two types of hybrid materials. Uh, one of them is called hybrid perovskites. These are semiconductors that be, can be grown from solution at low temperature. They have the perovskite structure, but they have an organic cation. And we use these materials for optoelectronics, such as solar cells and photodetectors and LEDs. And the other project we work on are atomically precise nanoclusters. Our lab has been very successful in growing a range of materials that are useful for catalysis and understanding how nanoclusters come together and how atoms of metals such as silver and copper interact with organic molecules to form magic number clusters. What makes the Functional Nanomaterials Lab unique is that we focus on materials at the atomic scale. Because we study materials that can be crystallized and we can obtain their single crystal structure, we can identify the positions of all the atoms involved. And we're very interested in how the atomic behavior influences the overall macroscopic behavior. KAUST is unique in, in that it has a wide range of core facilities. These are facilities that can be shared by many faculty. They have a really advanced electron microscopy facility that allows us to image materials at the atomic scale and understand the composition and, and structure. But also, several of our colleagues developed unique facilities to study materials, such as the 4D electron microscope. The aim of building uh, ultra-fast laser spectroscopy and ultra-fast electron microscopy here at KAUST is to track the most fundamental photophysical processes and photoactive materials commonly used in solar cell light emitting diode and photo uh, detectors. Using ultra-fast electron microscopy, especially in the scanning mode that is very sensitive to the surface and the interface dynamics, we can access to a lot of photophysical processes even at atomic level of the material surfaces uh, that cannot be obtained by any other spectroscopic or even electron microscopy techniques. And here at KAUS, in fact, we have the second generation of 4D electron microscopy in scanning mode. So the first generation we built at Caltech in the U.S. and here at KAUS we built the second generation with the basic capabilities so far. We are interacting with more than 15 different faculty here at KAUS in chemistry, materials science, electrical engineering. Internationally, we have also a lot of collaboration in the U.S., in U.K. and Canada. So in fact, this kind of uh, unique capabilities are needed for a lot of research. The material science and engineering uh, program at KAUST has three major thrusts. The main one is in renewable energy. Uh, the second one is, is in electronics and photonics. And the third one focuses on material design and synthesis. This includes a computational material science component and a synthetic component. My group is generally interested in developing nanomaterials for energy storage and electronic applications. Essentially, we are interested in understanding the charge storage mechanisms in materials and using that understanding to develop practical devices in energy storage. We are trying to develop batteries beyond lithium ion batteries. For example, sodium ion batteries. The challenge is that graphite, which is the commercial anode in lithium ion batteries, does not work with sodium. So we are developing carbon materials, layered materials to replace graphite for sodium ion batteries. We are also interested in developing capacitive energy storage. These are of interest for uh, sensor network applications, micropower applications, Internet of Things applications, where you need self-powered sensors that should not be changed for millions of cycles. I also imagine using our capacitive technology for capacitive deionization, which is purification of water. So basically, we're going to take these pieces and try to bring a lot of them together to produce solutions. In Photonics Lab, we make semiconductor laser or light emitting devices that can find good applications in uh, lighting, energy efficient lighting, for example, sensor material for energy harvesting, such as water splitting or the hydrogen generations. And at the same time, we also use those light sources for very fast speed optical communications, both in free space and underwater. With the current progress, we hope to eventually develop a optical communication system that allows us to have extremely fast internet access, hopefully about 100 times higher speed than the current technology. 
We also used the device to make sensor devices, for example, sensor that can apply to biomedical imaging. And we also used those structures and device to harvest energy from water to get hydrogen out of water. And we really hope that we be able to increase the solid hydrogen uh, generation method by using the material that we developed. KAUST is a very open environment for doing research and a very supportive environment for research. We have constant support of world-class researchers and staff, and we have also an environment where we can interact with our students freely and achieve creative goals and objectives. KAUST uh, has a lot of the state-of-the-art facilities, and we are very lucky that in addition to the center facility and the faculty facilities, we have also the core facility. And it's not easy to find this kind of complementary facilities in any other scientific institution. We want to take our research on electrochemical energy storage beyond what is currently possible. Imagine the zinc ion batteries replacing the lead acid batteries in the car. Imagine having to charge your electric vehicle only once every thousand miles. Imagine using sodium instead of lithium and the energy storage becomes much cheaper than currently is, much cheaper than solar cells. You don't have to worry uh, about the cost uh, of these materials. Imagine self-powered sensors that are in the thousands deployed around us, around the world, where you don't really have to change the battery, they, they are powering themselves. These are the sort of things that are driving our research here at Kowski.